the disbelievers of hadith the refusers of sunnah what are their arguments the first and the primary argument is that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had had stopped people from writing the hadith during the period of makkah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stopped the people from writing hadith and putting it down and penning it up so hadith was not written all the teachings of hadith and the mannerism and of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as sunnah was never written down in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not only this they say that the teachings and the words of hadith and sunnah they were remote they were not written they were not compiled and they were all forgotten and they were all in redundant for full like 2 to 300 years and it was like after full 300 years that hadith and sunnah was compiled and so because of that that it was forgotten it was left it was redundant it was not written down it was not compiled for full 300 years and after 300 years since it was compiled so it is not perfect it is not secure it is not complete and it is not 100% correct and that is why we doubt in it and that is why we just resort to quran now i would need to explain how the whole things went about there is absolutely no doubt that there are there are words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in just the initial period of makkah where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stopped the companions to write but there are just one or two such occasions when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reported incorrect words of hadith did stop his companions to write but this was just in the initial period of makkah and why did he stop was because this was just the start they were not well versed they were not well versed they were not acquainted with the language of quran and even with the hadith and if they started to write quran as well as hadith simultaneously at the same time when it was all very new to them then everything would have been like jumbled up and quran and hadith would have been all mixed up so in the very very initial stages prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did stop the companions to write but when when they were well versed with writing of the verses of quran and memorizing the verses of quran then there are so many incidents there are so many occasions in the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he actually ordered he actually ordered them to write and then he got it written himself like hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala who had a remarkable memory and when he used to hear the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to memorize them and companions used to come complaining to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of their short shortness of their memory that they could not remember the words of hadith as as properly as hazrat abu huraira used to and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to instruct them to write it down for a better memory prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to ask them instruct them and order them to write down the words of hadith a person came over to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the kabila of humair from the tribe of humair and he asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the drink which i was talking about just the last day the intoxicating drink and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him that it was forbidden and he said that i will accept because i've heard it with my own ears and i'm a witness to what you've told me but when i take these orders to the to the people of my tribe they will they will not accept it and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the companions uktubuli abisha put it down write it down write these orders for abusha so then because of this the previous words of the hadith number 1 are annulled and abrogated the hadith where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stopped them does not hold and did not hold even in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so during the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as quran was written and memorized so was hadith written and memorized 
many companions starting from Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu they used to write hadith and they are sahifas they they had their notebooks sahifa ali sahifa hazrat abu huraira which hazrat tamam bin munabbahi used this sahifa of hazrat abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu to compile sahifa hamam bin munabba and then hazrat abdullah bin masud and so many companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they used to write hadith and all these companions they wrote with intense honesty and full sensitivity because they knew that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said man qadaba alayya mut'ammadan faqad bada'a maqadahu min an-nar that anyone who who know who knowingly intentionally who intentionally knowingly fabricated falsehood with me will make his seat in hell fire so they were extremely sensitive they were they were intensely honest to write down the words of hadith and then the period next after the companions after the sahaba ikram were the tabi'in and the taba tabi'in the period of tabi'in and the period of taba tabi'in is well known that from morning till evening were were they calling out qala allah wa qala rasulullah that allah has said this and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said this This was the period where memorizers of hadith were very very common. And then it was in this period of Taba Tabi'in which is like 200 years after the death of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Imam Malik compiled Mota Imam Malik. And this Mota Imam Malik is present till now. And this was written down This was written down from all the informations and all the compilations of the companions of the Tabi'in and of the Taba Tabi'in that Imam Malik compiled his Mota Imam Malik, and this Mota Imam Malik was the major source of the basic big books of Hadith which was written in the period after this. May it be Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmizi, Ibn Majah, Nasa'i, Mustafa Ahmad, Abu Dawood. The basic source was Mota Imam Malik. So no hadith and no sunnah was lost or redundant and then taken up to three centuries to be compiled. No, they were continuously written, they were continuously memorized, and they were continuously saved down and put down in notebooks and sahifas. And moreover. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala himself he says inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa nahnu lahu lahafizun Allah says we have revealed this zikr and we ourselves shall protect and keep it secured so if Allah announces and promises to keep guard to keep secure the Quran then how how is it possible that he would leave the model of the Quran that is hadith and sunnah unattended and insecure Quran, Hadith, Sunnah are all secure, all complete, and all perfect. And then you know what? I would, I can easily go challenging the people who just say that we will believe in just the Quran, and we will not believe in Hadith and Sunnah. You can very easily ask them that if you just relate to Quran. how can you understand and comprehend quran without hadith and sunnah quran can only be understood comprehended and be acted upon in perfection when it is related with hadith and sunnah like if you're just talking about salah in in islam we're just talking about salah what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about salah in quran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says aqimu salata establish your prayers establish your salah then Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says warqa'u ma'ar raqi'in that is the order and the commandment for the congregational prayers of salah and then Allah says hafiz wal salawat take care of your salah protect your salah this is almost like all but Allah says about salah how when where how are we going to recite what are we going to recite when we are standing 
when we are prostrating, when we are bowed down, when we are in atashahad, when we cannot learn and we cannot offer our salah or establish our salah just by relating with Quran only. And we need to connect with hadith and sunnah to explain all these concepts of the salah. Similarly about purity, Allah Prophet said, At-tahur shatr al-iman, purity is half of faith, half of belief. Now, all the methods of purifying, like wudu, like the bath, or tayammum, the exact procedure, the exact method, the exact steps, we learn from the Quran? No. In complete guidance, it is from the Hadith and Sunnah. So if about these two basic, primary, preliminary things of Islam, we need to connect to Hadith and Sunnah and just connecting to Quran, we cannot completely act. Then how can we complete and how can we acquire full guidance for Quran about the whole of Islam?